and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the Vector Everest 3-18x50. Now, this optic retails for $290 Canadian or $220 US. Now, if you guys have seen my previous review on the Vector Marksman 4.5 to 18 by 50, well, specs wise, both of these optics are very similar. I'm gonna be pointing out a few of the differences between both of these. For example, the Everest is a little bit longer and obviously it has locking turrets, whereas the Marksman does not. So anyway, back to the review. So we're going to review this optic on the following criteria. I'm going to be looking at, is it accurate? I'll have it on my 223, my Tika 223. Next, I'll have it on my 308. Uh, then we're going to look at the glass quality. You're going to see for yourselves just how clear the glass is. We're going to look at the focus parallax to ensure it works. The numbers match the distance indicated. Everything functions as it should. We're going to look at the turrets. This is where it gets a little bit more complex. So we're going to do a box test. We're going to make sure that uh, we're going to make sure it tracks correctly. And we're going to see how much internal adjustment it has. I mean, it has 60 MOA, but we want to make sure. Next, we're going to look at the eye relief. Now, Vector is fairly well known for its long eye relief. That's something they really have down. Next, we're going to look at the reticle. Now, if you look at the screen, well, we have all the subtensions. We've got a hold of all of those, so if you do need them, there they are. Uh, and lastly, the warranty. So without further ado, let's start testing this optic. Ah, a little high. Oof. It was a little low that time, but That's it for the 223, let's move it up to the 308. All right, so we did pretty darn good on the 223. Let's give it a try on the 308. Now an important thing to, to get your, really, your groups a little bit better is to uh, use the same kind of brass if you're reloading. I've learned that with time. <laughs> So far, so good. I mean, the groups are doing pretty good, but I can't help but like flinch. I'm just not as used to this uh, 308 that I am as on my 223. Practice will make perfect though. And I mean, the groups are looking pretty good. Ooh, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, I really, I must have really flinched that time. I don't think it's the ammo. I took extra care. So for accuracy, it did really well. 5 out of 5. And for recoil, just the same, 5 out of 5. Next, let's go look at the glass quality. Magnification. This is 18. At 230 meters. 
So for glass quality, we're gonna give it the same score that we gave the Marksman. Now it has the same exact glass in both of these optics, so it's getting the same mark. Um, I was comparing both of these optics at really long distances in the city, obviously not on a firearm, but trying to see if I can really tell if there was one has better glass than the other, and really th there's no real difference between the glass in either of these. Regardless that the Everest is longer, it doesn't seem to really get a better image at all. So, I mean, the Everest is a little bit more expensive, but it's not for the glass. So, uh, we're gonna give it a four out of five. For the price, that is a good price for the glass that's in this optic. I was shooting at 560 meters, and yes, it was a little bit blurry. There was a little bit of uh, chromatic aberration, which is to be expected when you're, you're really using this optic at that range or further. If you're using this scope at 300 meters, well, your, your target will be very crisp and very clear. Beyond that, and that's really where you're gonna get a little bit of a blurriness. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you want something a little bit with a sharper image, you do have to spend a little bit more than this. Now, next we have the focus parallax. The numbers do match the distance indicated. It goes all the way from um, a little bit less than 10, 15, 25, 50, 100, 200, 500, and infinity. So it works just fine. There was no complaints there. We're gonna give it a five out of five. Next, we have the turrets. This is where we start doing a little bit more intensive testing. Now, these are re-zeroable. You just simply remove that little set screw. You take off the turret, and you put it back on the zero once you've zeroed it on your rifle. Now, to lock it, well, you just press it down, and to unlock it, you just lift it up. It's a very positive lock. It's not like some other optics that I reviewed where it kind of is mushy. So this is really nice. Next, listen to this. That's some pretty audible clicks. Same thing on the windage. Okay, so some pretty nice turrets. Personally, I find they're far more positive than the Marksman. So just based on that, I would favor the Everest over the Marksman, just in fact of turrets. Not to mention that the Everest has 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment, whereas the Marksman only has 50. Now, if you're doing a little bit more longer range or if the whatever rifle you're shooting has a, a lot of drop to it, whatever caliber really. So if you're shooting a 22 at any distances, well, a 22 long rifle tends to drop quite a bit, especially after 100 meters. Or if you're shooting a 308, you know, um, at 500 meters, well, that was 17 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. Now, if I was on the Marksman, that would leave me only, I think, about 8 MOAs worth of internal adjustment, and then I'd be bottomed out. So realistically, I probably wouldn't, be in, wouldn't have been able to go any further than 700 meters with this optic. Whereas with the 60 MOA, I can probably almost get to 1,000 meters, which is very nice. Now, additionally, before we really start testing these turrets, I was at 560 meters. Uh, I was set at zero. I zeroed it. I was shooting up to 560, and that was 17 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. And then I brought it back to 100 meters, and I returned it to its zero and I was shooting exactly back where I started. I did that multiple times and it always returned to its point of origin. So let's get out and test these turrets. Let's start with the box test. Let's go 10 MOA upwards. Okay, let's go 10 MOA right. Let's go 10 MOA downwards. And let's go 10 MOA left. We should be back at zero. Now, let's see if there's a point of impact change with the magnification. That's three magnification. And we're back. Let's see how much internal adjustment it has. And that's it. And that's it. We're back at zero. Let's see how much windage adjustment it has. Now you'll probably notice on the in the reticle there is a incorporated 10 MOA um, uh, little line there. 
And that should be back at zero. So for the turrets, it did really well. It survived the Bach test. The tracking was really good. Uh, there's no point of impact change with the magnification as expected. It has 60 MOEs worth of internal adjustment, which is really nice. And these turrets feel really nice, which is something you really want when you're buying, your, when you're buying an optic. Uh, personally, I would definitely recommend the Everest over the Marksman just for these simple things. So the turrets are a big deal. So for the turrets, we're going to give them a 5 out of 5. They're pretty nice. Uh, let's look at the eye relief. Now this has a really long eye relief. This is how far I am and I still have a full image. And it also has a fairly forgiving eye box. It's not the most forgiving I've seen, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, the fast focus eyepiece is, is a bit snug, but it's smooth. Like you don't feel any friction. It's, it's like there's some grease in there that's, that's holding it really well. And there is no there is no slop in this. This is really nice. Now I've seen more expensive scopes with a little bit of slop, but this, was, but this one has none. So big thumbs up for this. So for the eye relief, we're gonna give it a four out of five. That's a good amount of eye relief. And this fast focus eyepiece is nice. Uh, next, let's look at the reticle. So have a look at the screen. These are the reticle subtensions. So if, for example, you're going to do some holdovers, well, that's what you're going to need to know. Now, I couldn't really find them on the internet, so I did contact the manufacturer and ask them for the uh, subtension. So you may just want to write these down or take a snippet of the screen. So for the reticle, I mean, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. This is really my personal preference of reticle. It's really a target reticle. It's not really a hunting reticle, but it's what I like. 5 out of 5. Lastly, we have the warranty. So Vector offers a five-year warranty, which is good, but it's only going to get a three out of five. Now, if you were to ask me which one would I recommend over the Marksman or the Everest, every time I would recommend the Marksman. It, it does seem a little bit heavier, which I mean on the screen, I'll put the weights. I just really felt far more comfortable with the Everest. Additionally, it has these nice little directional... Um, uh, indicators on the the actual housing on the actual main tube to indicate which way you're turning goes up or down not that you can even see them if you have your cheek on your cheek weld or even a bit raised because I mean the scope rings are in the way it's a good idea but it doesn't really work <laughs> both these optics are really nice I mean you in both of them you have really long eye relief um, the turrets they feel pretty positive these ones are just not lockable but this is really just a target scope this one is target but you can also use it for hunting so keep that in mind which one i recommend definitely the everest so if you guys enjoyed this review consider hitting like consider hitting subscribe and i'll see you on the next review